So we had a, a, a chat a couple of seconds ago that said uh, mm. uh, from Luke Kovach, I'm about half an hour behind the two Jameses after Tom Canton. Uh, if you pull out Andrew from our blog next, I think I might implode. Class charity, class preseason. Thank you, Bristol, England. Um, here's Andrew from our blog. Uh, <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> now, now, from our blog news, uh, Andrew Allen. Uh, now, now, next will be Andrew Mangan, our blog. So, uh, so when you get when you catch up to this, you're going to go nuts. But Andrew, my friend, how you been? I'm good, Frey. I'm good, mate. How you doing? I'm I'm uh, starting to get a little tired. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Yeah, with you. I can imagine. You've been uh, it's been a pretty epic undertaking so far. And what are you halfway through yet? We we've reached the halfway mo- part. I believe this is a continuation of our it's the second half of our sixteen out of twenty seven. Wow. So um, you know, normally Insane. this is a, if I had woken up a minute before we went live, this is about the time a person would normally be putting their head down to go to sleep. And I'm nowhere near either one of those things. Um, what are you but, uh, what are you using to stay awake are you uh you want energy drinks okay yeah 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 i start i started off all the energy the, drinks yeah the, the, I'm, I'm gonna turn into i i now uh play for salzburg uh red bull salzburg uh, I, I i own i own 50 percent plus one of that team i believe just a few minutes ago i i saw i saw him mix a red bull and a rock star he just put them both in, a, in one just mixed it up. and and poured some cocaine in there <laughs> Um, just for good measure yeah um, I'll, keep, I'll keep an eye out for the heart attack later in the show then yeah you know the the, the vodka red the uh, grand in finale the hour i'll start mixing in the vodka so because you know at that point what's what have i got to lose um so we've we've, we've uh we've had some pretty back-to-back appearances now uh for us and each time you seem to be setting the stage for uh for the big man but we don't want to <laughs> We, we don't want that to be your legacy here at the Gunners Podcast. So, um, so Andrew, um, tell us a little bit about, uh, for those that weren't watching when you were on with us a month or two ago, um, tell us about yourself, your, your kind of your role with, with Ars Blog uh, News and, and is it deputy e- editor of... Well, I mean, it's the title I just made up on the hook. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... It's, it's it's something the founder I've of our blog news i think was what, yeah, we're, well, what yeah. we ended up with um i mean andrew and i started working together about 11 years ago on our blog news um he was looking for a couple of people to kind of come in and help him get the site up and running and um man i just can't believe where 11 years have gone i mean it's just it's it's crazy i mean <laughs> uh just the other day we were kind of looking through some old stories and we were just kind of like slightly mind blown by all the stuff that's happened and actually all the stuff that you forget about that's happened. Um, but yeah, he's, he's put up with me for 11 years. We continue to get, he continues to to deal with the bad feedback that I get from my articles. Um, but somehow he, he allows me to stick around. It's all good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of the same relationship I have with Mikey. Um, <laughs> And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a good symbiotic partnership. It's great stuff to read. You know, you, you, uh, I think you covered for him while he was on, uh, on vacation. He, you were like, you were like Mackenzie Culkin. Cal- is it Mackenzie Culkin? Um, the hell is his name? Mackenzie uh, Crook? No, the Home Alone kid. The, the, um, oh, yeah. Uh, Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin, yeah. Yeah. Did he leave you with the keys? And, and did, uh, did Joe Pesci come into to the website and try to steal everything? Well, I mean, look. Luckily, this time I was uh, I was able to trash the place with two other guys. So, Arsbog Tom, who always helps fill out, and and Tim Stillman was around. Nice. Basically, I uh, can see Tim absolutely wrecking a hotel room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The man's crazy. You can't take him anywhere. Um, he. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's always fun covering for Andrew. I mean, it's kind of. Um, I mean, I. I'm fascinated that he he finds something new to write about every single day. So I was glad to, on this occasion, be able to sort of share the burden because it, it you know, you, you can spend a lot of the day trying to think about, oh my God, what am I going to write about if nothing happens? And at this time, the season, well, that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was a little bit quiet. Thankfully, the, the US tour was going on. It looked like you had a, a pretty incredible time on that. Um, so did the players. To say the least, uh, I mean, it, it was phenomenal um, just being able to wear all those different hats and have fun with fans, with yeah. access to players through the media, access to players from fan events. Just, it, it, you know, you're, I mean, you and Andrew, and, and we'll talk to Andrew about this in a few minutes, sorely missed during the, I mean, the, the, the having spent the last summer tour in the States, a good bit of it with Andrew, uh, 
I'm surprised he didn't move heaven and earth to come to this one. Um, but yeah, I think I think I know when he's the, not a big fan of Florida, and 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 I can understand <laughs> why. Uh, I think when the details dropped for it as well, it was sort of a little bit earlier in the year. And I think Andrew at the time was kind of had his eye on Spain. So fair enough, you know, easing himself back into international travel. But I definitely, I'd love to come out to one of them. I've kind of, I think there's talk about um, the players going down to Australia next uh, yeah, year. And I my think brother lives pretty solid. My brother lives down there. So there's a sort of outside chance I might try and combine the two things and uh, go watch the players do some, do some Aussie stuff. Um, have, you, have you planned any trips over? You coming? You coming back over to London anytime soon? I will be there in uh, uh, in in three weeks. Uh, three weeks. Uh, three weeks time. I will be over uh, for two weddings um, and three Arsenal games and a live event, which I would hope that you will uh, will join us for. Gabe, Gabe, uh, you know Gabe Millard. Uh, sure, the, sure. The, he was on with us a few hours ago and. You know, I met him through uh, through Elliot and and the the great production job he's done on the live events this last year or so, and he's agreed to do ours. Um, we're going to do you know kind of a mini version. We, we're we, we've we've sold out the Union Chapel four times over for four consecutive nights, but uh, but but even with that, we've decided to do it in a one hundred person venue. Um, but yeah, I'll be over the 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 second of September. We're going to do a live event. Just love to collect as many you know fun, interesting people there as that we can. Uh, and and you fall into that category, so we'll we'll, we'll have more oh, details. You're too kind. That. But, um, uh, no, that sounds good. Which game is that for? I can't remember. Fulham, Fulham home. I will be extremely yep. hungover from Tom Canton's wedding, uh, but I will make it there. Uh, Villa midweek uh, at home, and then uh, the event on Friday night, and then United away. Um, never wow. been to Old Trafford before. I've been to the Etihad. Never been to Old Trafford. It's uh, a dump. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the experience. My that third is it game, one of those storied, it's the, storied uh, stadiums where like the the history carries it more than than the actual experience. It, it looks all right when you're inside, but from the outside, you're not missing much. It's a bit of an eyesore. It's a real hodgepodge of sort of different architecture, and you know, I mean, they I think they're well aware that they need to upgrade their stadium, uh, but uh, it's big. You've got that going for it, and we're guaranteed to concede at least two goals. So there's also that. There's <laughs> that. We, um, yeah, the third game up in Manchester was the one where I kind of lost my wife a little bit. I mean, I didn't lose my wife, but like her, her interest in in this trip being a vacation for the two of us after dropping my son off at college, um, it became a little too much about Arsenal. But I'm banking on the fact that she's going to enjoy it anyway. Which uh, which college is he going to? Uh, James Madison University here in Virginia. Um, Amazing. Yeah, he's uh, he's looking forward to it. I'm not because the guy's like my my buddy, man. Yeah. I'm gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss him. Fly in the nest. I'm yeah. trying to convince Mike to head out for uh, late April. Me and my mate Chris are going to be out there, and if there's a better tour guide out there, I I, I doubt it. And I'm trying to convince I, Mikey to go. I, I, one yeah, more time. I can. I, I, I run a mean spreadsheet when it comes to uh yeah. Mikey, you know, Mikey's like, like I could swing by England real quick. Um I've got people asking me, they're like, I'm doing a trip over and I saw your trip last year with your son. Can you give me all your secrets? And I'm like, I, I, I it's not like a like a, a mind, but like it's a lot of work. Like I don't I can't just, you know, it's a lot of stuff to, to plan and a lot of it can't can't even take take form until like three weeks before the actual games themselves. You need to add that to the list of Patreon rewards that you guys uh, oh, hand yeah. out. Oh, yeah. That along with the <laughs> late night texts of you up. Exactly. Yeah, I think we do need to do that. Still for, that still for the low, low fee of $9,999.99, correct? <laughs> per month. Entry, per month, entry level. Yeah, for Per sure. month, entry, yeah, entry level. Um, we've got to find an, a, a good entry level that, uh, that might actually get some people in that. But um, so how invested were you in the three lionesses in uh in the in the in the euros i mean from a coverage standpoint and or just fandom yeah i mean look i i i, I tuned into all but one of the games where i had a kind of clash with a, a social event but I, I i thought it was great i mean you know there was um 
there was a genuine sense of togetherness, which in this country has been sorely lacking over the course of the last uh, few years. Um, and, you know, there was a, a real lovely kind of, I think it was just a brilliant occasion for people, you know, that crowd, 87,192. I mean, as they said, like it's the insane. highest for any UEFA event, men or women. I mean, that is just phenomenal. And, you know, I, I, I wish them all the best. I hope they, they go on to, you know, as they kept saying, this is a building block and all the rest of it. I mean, from a site point of view, I mean, you saw Tim was going left, right and center. To, I think he went to nine games in total. Um, he uh, was at Wembley, obviously, after the final. So I did a little nice sort of roundup report, uh, which was really lovely to, to be able to do. And people really appreciated that. And, you know, I was looking in the back end of the numbers. It's you know, it's it's unsurprising for anyone to 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 hear that by and large the women's uh, section of the site doesn't get anywhere near the traffic of the men's. But for that particular uh, story, huge traffic, and like ninety nine percent of the comments were positive. Now, you know, the first ever story on Ask Blog News uh, eleven years ago was about Arsenal women winning the FA Cup. I think it was. We've come a bloody long way since there, you know, like Tim single handedly is, is, is kind of, well, not single handedly. I mean, Tim has built a team around him, which is creating incredible content. And I genuinely believe the club appreciate his efforts because it is raising the profile of the women's team and, and the, the women's games and all the rest of it. Um, you know, after the game, my mum was like, I want to go to the, the women's North London derby. So we booked four tickets. I was having a look on the website yesterday and, you know, it's, it's selling like hotcakes. So, um, yeah, I expect this is going to be a big, you know, a big, there should be a big halo effect off the, off the back of the final. I think there's going to be a halo effect in that. I think I might just be uh, headed for some hot cakes myself. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's great. We've, we've, we've really kind of come round and round to it on this, on this podcast. I was absolutely thrilled. I, I support England in every, uh, sporting endeavor for whatever reason, uh, you know, even, even the ruggers, and uh and the cricket i remember the the morning of we care to you i'll never these two are, are, what a are morning. intertwined because i was in a hotel room hung over af in denver the night after we uh i think went for the mexican food uh mikey and uh and i you woke up call it that i woke up on the game day to the we care to you thing mixed with the most incredible cricket world cup finale or whatever mm. the whatever that i mean just the i don't i mean i don't even know how to describe it but i from what i understood about cricket it was the oh it was i mean i'm i you know i'm not a, a huge cricket fan but that was a cricket match that had me jumping up and down like it was an arsenal win like unfortunately it was just I, couldn't, so dramatic. I couldn't watch it so i was i was like hitting refresh to find out what the next over with like the next yeah. hit. i was living and dying with it it was incredible and this was like at four o'clock in the morning uh uh us time or denver time anyway I, th I think that yeah andrew was out with you on that bit of the tour i think because i remember i was covering <laughs> for ask blog and i actually think i wrote about the cricket and i think the same day there was a wimbledon final between uh might that's have been right federer, federer right. and Djokovic. yeah um and that was on uh, right at right after the right after the cricket ended it was the the wimbledon final and um yeah that was um that was uh, well. Well, Andrew had come straight out to L.A. He skipped the de the Denver part, which was amusing because that's when Josh Kroenke granted his interview. But uh, but he had flown out to L.A. to do a show with Elliot, uh, and then waited for the team in L.A. But so uh, that was about the day before. But um, how did we get on that? Oh, just my support for England and its and its teams. I just I, I just love it and seeing the scenes in Trafalgar Square and the. Just the, the love for the sport. It's just it it, it, it it's got to be a really interesting time to be over in England right now from a sporting perspective. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I it was funny because I think a lot of football fans when they they looked at this summer they were like, oh, there should have been a, a a men's World Cup there, and it's never quite the same when you 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 kind of lose that four week period that covers you sort of in the build up to to preseason and um and this really I mean from an English perspective anyway really filled filled the gap nicely. Um, it really massively helped, I think, from my perspective, and I think obviously a lot of Arsenal fans, that two of the key players in the teams were, you know, Leah Williamson, the captain, and then Beth Mead has been voted player of the tournament and top goal scorer. So, um, you know, their profile has the potential to go through the roof now. I was reading before the tournament that Leah Williamson had sort of signed a, a deal with Gucci. Um, so, 
yeah, I mean it's it's going to be Gucci on 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 Sunday and Boreham Wood on uh, on the Saturday or whatever. But uh, yeah, there'll be an interesting balance for her to get over. But I I just love her. I think she's got such um <clears throat> such sort of Tony Adams energy about her. There's yeah. sort of uh, there's a real sort of sort of serious captain's vibe about her. Whenever she, whenever I see her talking. She, it seemed pretty clear yesterday that she was one of the few that wasn't absolutely hung over to shit. Um, some of the girls who were on stage in Trafalgar Square singing karaoke looked like, you know, they might wake up this morning and go, oh, my God, what, <laughs> what have I done? Yeah, uh, I mean, they, they, they're, they're, they're making the most out of it, as they should. I mean, when, when our local hockey team won, uh, the Washington Capitals won the Stanley Cup for their one and only time. There was like a four day period where they just paraded around Washington, D.C., drinking as much as you could. Like they were they were ending up like passing out in like public fountains and stuff. I mean, and, and everyone just loved them for it. It was great. <laughs> I was going to ask you a question, actually. So obviously the Cronky franchise, the Colorado Avalanche won the, the Stanley Cup and, the, you know, they, they, they've helped the L.A. Rams to a, to a Super Bowl. What's the general vibe in the States about what the Cronkies mean to, to, to sports over there? I mean, I know that obviously his reputation in St. Louis is, you know, still mud. Um, yeah, uh, I'm kind of curious. Least, yeah. Forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what what he did to the city of St. Louis, his you know the home st- home city, home state, uh, is is inexcusable. And I spend a lot of time uh, visiting my daughter who goes to uni in, in Missouri, um, and uh, they're not fans of him there. Um, you know, it, it's it, in America. There's just so much sport and so many, and it's so spread out that I don't I don't think like. The average person in Virginia, where I live, has an opinion on Stan Kroenke if they're not an Arsenal fan, um, okay. because you know none of his, you know none of his, you know, or if you're in Florida or if you're in Texas, New York, the the high population areas, Stan Kroenke is just another, you know, rich white American male owner, um, and in that regard, he he's not popular, but you know, it really is kind of the 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 bigger thing for me is seeing how, you know, American Arsenal fans or even English Arsenal fans and supporters deal with his success in other areas. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we have it on very good authority uh, from, you know, from Aston who, uh, who had FaceTime. He's the only one uh, in the, in the fan or media who had FaceTime with, uh, with with both Josh and Stan Kroenke, and really got a, a, a sense and an intuition on what their feelings were about this kind of renaissance in KSC. And um, you know, as he'll tell you when he comes back very shortly, they said we're next. Um, you know that they're so that this concept of these these questions that people would ask that I almost thought were silly, like will will winning the Super Bowl make them want this more for arsenal will winning the stanley cup now make them want this more for arsenal i'm like they're you know the the consummate businessman you just uh, you know you you just don't necessarily know i actually do now believe that they're like you know what we want to keep this thing going and you know it's either the denver nuggets basketball team or us that's next and i i yeah i think it should be us yeah well i mean from what we can tell i mean they're obviously a proactive force within the club now when it comes to decision making and signing off on deals and stuff. I mean, I know that you and I have gone back and forth on the on the previous time I chatted to you about where that money might be coming from. I mean, obviously there's a there's a, a question mark on what the terms are that are attached to it, but we have to assume right. that they're, you know, they're doing it in good faith at the moment. Uh, they don't appear to be heading towards any major international sanctions or anything like that, like like a Roman Abramovich. So, I think we're we're relatively safe in their in their hands at There's the moment. Plus. But yeah, 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 quite that we know um, of. That we know of. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I, uh, at this point in the summer, I think if you'd said to me in May that we would have signed five players going into the start of the season, that you know, one of those would be able to cover at left back and in central midfield that they'd also have a, a striker as good as Gabriel Jesus. Um, I'd be, I'd be pretty damn pleased with things. I think we, we still got some, some work to, to maybe get done before, before the end of the window. Uh, but it doesn't look like anything's going to happen incoming wise before Friday. That's for sure. But by and large, I have to say I'm relatively, you know, excited about things. I've just been writing the, 
uh, well, last night I was writing the Ask blog, kind of big season preview thing that Tim and Andrew and I tend to put together each year. And, you know, I'm looking for things to 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 get worried about. And at the moment, it's like maybe we're one striker down. Uh, you know, maybe we could do with someone a bit more specialised, providing backup at right back. Uh, but otherwise, I'm I'm kind of like I pretty I like this team. So, Andrew, out of curiosity, did your perspective change in the last couple of years of the Cronkies? Like, did you have a more negative thought process about them? So, I, I'm always curious about the whole when when is it enough or how much change you need to see because you know other than like gary neville that can't work out what we're doing uh i, I like to believe that more Ars- most arsenal fans could see exactly what's going on it do was really transparent in his last interview so you get a sense as you said that they seem to be more involved in a very proactive in a very positive way so like you just mentioned it's very difficult to find negatives or things to worry about so did you ever have like a switch on moment where you potentially were like, man, these, these owners potentially, man, they, they don't care to, okay, now they're, they're changing their ways. I, 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 I'd stop short of saying that I trust them. Uh, and I'd stop short of saying that they won me over. Absolutely. I, we're not there yet for sure. Um, you know, the, the decision-making uh, around the super league thing, I found hugely offensive. I understand why why they did it, but I I I was wholly against it, and I was there at the protest. Um, I take umbrage with the idea that it's only since they took full ownership that they suddenly felt like they needed to sort of be proactive in some of the decision making, as if you know they were allowed or were were happy with them being majority owners, but allowing the club to kind of just fall into this state of disrepair on their watch. Um, I feel like there's been a certain amount of revisionism around a lot of that. I think what they found in Arteta in particular is there's someone who wanted to plot out a five-year plan. And to be honest, a bit like under Arsene Wenger, they kind of just do what they're told. I mean, that sounds really weird, doesn't it? For you know, But you know, they, they seem more content with strong figureheads underneath them who are able to do the legwork. And then they'll go, okay, we'll put our you know, checkbook to that. Um, Arson obviously operated in a, in a, in a different way because he didn't really go, you know, cap in hand to them asking for huge amounts of money because he always believed more in the self-sustaining model. The way we've got to now is that Arteta feels that we have to speculate to accumulate. And I think they've realized that too, they're businessmen. Um, they can't afford to have the the product out of the premier league for, 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 for too much longer, really. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I think they're, they're working in the right direction. If they keep, uh, I think Josh is doing well to maintain some level of fan contact. And I think small things like that are appreciated. Um, I notice that more than anything, it's filtering down to the rest of the, you know, the infrastructure. Vinay is a very public presence. Um, and, I, you know, he's, he works very hard with the rest of the team to try and maintain, you know, social contact with people, but to also sort of touch on serious issues. I think you're seeing a lot of that with the club. You know, they're, they're really trying to, to connect with, you know, gay fans, fans of uh, various minorities. Um, and I think the new generation of supporters coming through appreciates that. Um so I'm yeah, I'm mean... waiting for the Jewish fan invite, but um, <laughs> but to be fair, that you know, all uh, you, they, you they had been happy holidays that I didn't even know were Jewish holidays, to be honest with you, and I'm Jewish, so, <laughs> um, so you know, I do think that they're they're, they're sensitive in that way. We are uh, we are bringing in now uh, the Podfather himself, um, again, Luke Kovacs, who uh, who asked uh, about half an hour ago. He's like, all these great guests, if you pull arse blog out of your ass or something those weren't the words that he used so don't worry andrew um he's like i'll just i'll fall over here yeah he said um paraphrasing if you pull pull out andrew from arse blog next i think i might implode so uh he'll be imploding soon welcome andrew in Uh, in 42 minutes time he'll implode yeah 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 (laughs) you always have to bring your ass into things mike so uh, It, it it is um now you made up this thing about not liking Florida, basically because I was going to be in Florida. Did you not? 
<laughs> I didn't say anything uh, negative about Florida whatsoever. I was on holidays. It had nothing to do with, you know, giant Mickeys uh, in Orlando or anything like that. So uh, Mickeys that may or may not have been slipped to James. Uh, while well, there. There's but, all kinds of Mickeys. It has a lot of meanings on this side of the this side of the pond. So um, whether it's a giant mouse or something else, but no, I mean, look, I I I could see that you obviously had a great time. Um, it's almost as if you thrive on being the center of attention. I'm, I'm not sure I if I never really had it put there that way by everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found that out when I met him at New Orleans and he literally pushed me out of the, the frame of the shot. We we're going to take a picture. <laughs> That's what I, I thought. Watching... Maybe my friend Mike yeah. has an issue. I, I was no, watching I was the. the um... we, we have an off camera relationship until very recently. So it's a sure. It was quite funny. I was watching the highlights of the the Chelsea game, whatever uh, was it last Saturday and Sunday morning. I got up and uh, I was doing the blog, and I was watching the highlights of the the Chelsea game. And I think it could have been when the first goal goes in. It cuts to a shot of the crowd, and who's there? Right, looking in the at my phone. phone. Looking at your phone, yeah. What I was doing was I was getting it into video taking mode so that I because because I have a video from like five seconds later of everybody cheering and celebrating. I wasn't like watching porn or anything like that you're watching no escape. no escape that's all that, that was my point there's no escape yeah now you, you you've said on many occasions with 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 a wistful look in your eye that there doesn't seem to be an escape <laughs> from me and and uh and i think uh kaya and and james got uh got that firsthand uh andrew i know that you uh you had said you need to cut out right around noon uh or midday <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off. I'll leave you with the boss, and uh, I'll just keep my eye out for some, you know, breaking Lucas Torreira to Galatasaray news or something similar. Beautiful. Uh, that's what we need. Uh, really quick, top four, bottom three, and a and a kind of a a, a surprising uh, prediction that might not uh, be okay. To be, um, uh, I've got City to win, Liverpool second, Chelsea third, Arsenal fourth. Okay, I'm I'm so going against. Chelsea go, but yeah, I know. I just feel like they'll they'll get their shit together at some point, I'll and then it. to to go down Fulham, Forest, and Leeds because obviously I hate Leeds United. Um, okay, and then surprising thing, Santi Gazzola to return to Arsenal in some form. Ah, I don't think we've had that one yet. Or, no, actually, we had we had. Uh, we had someone that said Burkamp or Santi Cazola to come back. Ah, well, um, I'm going with Santi. I'm sorry to not be original, but well, you know, um, I like it. I that's like okay. It. You do you, do you like it? Do you like it? Whoa! Like All right. Uh, so here we go. Thank you. Uh, Cheers, Andrew. guys. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. Best of luck okay. for the rest Thanks of the uh, rest of the sixteen hours. Uh, yeah, we are now in hour seventeen. Thank you, Andrew. Um, <laughs> Our 17 of 27. We're, we're in the home stretch, uh, if we could call it that. Um, 10 hours to the end of the podcast. And as we're at the top of the hour, real quick, we need to do a prize draw, um, as promised. And this prize draw is for a, uh, a Ruth Beck art painting of Highbury, the staircase to blocks A through F, and lavatories, which is something that I mm. could really use right now. Um <laughs> So let's get the catheter. No, you're not just sitting here for 27 <laughs> hours with a catheter and a bucket. Not a catheter, but <laughs> yeah. Um, the dedication, Andrew, to to my craft is is you know is otherworldly. All right, so the the drawing for the Ruth Beck art print. Please don't make me do 18 draws because at this point we're having a lot of repeat winners here. Alexander Smith. I don't think Alexander has won anything. So Alexander now has won a Ruth Beck art print. Alexander, thank you for your generous donation. And uh, you have won this piece of art from Ruth Beck. So uh, congratulations. Let me just put his name in there. And then um, Mikey, have uh, when we've had Andrew on, have you been – I always forget who my co-hosts are for various podcasts. Have you this formally met? No, sir. This is my first time. I've I've missed them various times, unfortunately, uh, throughout my uh, horrible work schedule and, and our time frames. But yeah, this is the first time uh, I get to podcast with the Podfather, as you dubbed him. Oh, yeah. cool. oh I didn't big, dub him that. This this uh, might this might shock you, Andrew. Big fan. 
Well, thank you very much, Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so I, I had a question just based on the, the Ruth Beck uh, pictures. And, you know, uh, Highbury has been a point of conversation a lot of times. Mm. As a younger fan that, uh, you know, uh, only got a handful of years watching Arsenal and Highbury, I, I've always been kind of curious about something. Like, everybody talks about how great of a stadium it was and, you know, how it encompassed what Arsenal was. Do you think that's largely a contributing factor is that we were just a more successful club like so like when i think about highbury i think about good shit 24 7 and i think about emirates you know yes the fa cups but at the same time i'm like you just think of constant we, struggle and grinding we, we, too. yeah yeah like i i there's listen there's score lines that are still scarred in my head that i wish they weren't there all right put it that way so i i would just kind of we weren't it, losing six nil to Chelsea at Highbury. It just didn't feel like it anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's just a history, isn't it? The the amount of years that Arsenal were there and the amount of teams, like you know, it's not as if there weren't some um some difficult times when Arsenal were at Highbury, you know, periods where we didn't win very much and when the team wasn't very good. Um, but because of that accumulation of history and accumulation of of um, you know trophies and and amazing players which i you know it, it culminated didn't it like almost at the the peak of um i know we'd sort of gone beyond but like the final year at highbury we, we got to the champions league final before that we'd won the fa cup 2003 2004 you know maybe the best arsenal team many people have seen so i think they're kind of it's like watching a movie where you're sort of going, I'm not sure about this movie, but then the last 20 minutes are amazing. So, you know, it, it keeps you, it, it sort of, um, co not colors or whatever. It informs what you think about that movie. But look, there was just so many years and so much history at, at Highbury. Um, and yeah, I think it's fair to say as well that we haven't really, um, had that kind of in stadium success at the Emirates that we had at Highbury, you know, where you're celebrating a league title and everybody's in the stadium. Mm -hmm. You've just beaten Everton four nil on a sunny day. We haven't had that moment. We've had success. We've had some great nights, some great results. And when we've won things, it's been away from yeah. the yeah. Emirates, yeah. you know, at, at Wembley or at Cardiff or whatever it is. Um, well, no, just at Wembley, obviously. Um, so I think, I think that's something that's missing for sure. Um, and it'd be does, nice. does, a big, does a big achievement there finally end that, or or will it always be that that you know, and that that Highbury was where we left our soul, and and along with that, where do you stand on the practicality? Not what was said at the time by Gazidis or by Peter Hillwood or any of those characters, uh, but could we have maintained our status as a top club or a should be top club with the economics and the fees and the and the logistics of still being at Highbury in 2022. I don't think so because they couldn't expand it anymore. So you're right. always going to be restricted. I think the the capacity in the end was 38 38 and a half thousand, something like that. And you know, I think what what kind of gets lost in the midst of time is that when we as a club decided to move to the Emirates, you know, having a bigger stadium when you look around at what you know what real madrid are playing and what bayern munich are playing and what uh barcelona were playing in um the biggest clubs had the biggest stadiums and there was a direct correlation between the size of your stadium the amount of revenue you brought in from matches and then what kind of financial power you had in the game so the plan was obviously to increase the capacity by well over a third i think 20 over twenty two thousand, something like that you know, increase for better or worse. I know people have their own opinions on this, the the sort of corporate facilities and, and things like Diamond Club and club level and all those kind of things, which are there to, to bring in revenue, which in the football landscape at the time was really the only way that people could envisage increasing your revenue and increasing your 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 firepower in the market, in the transfer market. And then just as we were putting that plan in place and, and we'd broken ground, football changed when Abramovich came along and then, um, you know, it didn't matter. Chelsea could play in a 20,000 seater stadium, but they had the billions of Abramovich and, and what it did to the way football operates financially, I think, you know, is something we're still trying to come to terms with because, you know, back then it was a great plan 
how do we make ourselves better? How do we make ourselves bigger? Let's invest in a stadium. It's going to cost us a lot of money, but we're going to be able to generate a lot more revenue. Therefore, we're going to be able to buy better players. We're going to have a better team. And all of a sudden, you know, it's oligarchs and nation states and oil. And, 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 and worldwide recession. And I mean, you know, what, what happened in 2008 may not mm. be on the radar for most football fans, but uh, it certainly is when it you know when it comes to how that impacted Arsenal and uh, it, it's just a it was a literally a, a shit storm of shit um, that made the struggle and it made the you know the job that Arsene Wenger did keeping us in Champions League money yeah. for all that time even more yeah. impressive though it might not have felt so at the time. No, I mean there's another aspect to this which I think you know is a is a pet theory of mine which I've yet to really expand on but you know you'll remember Mike. Um, you know, what, what a struggle it was to get the Emirates built. And they had to tie themselves into fairly um, restrictive deals, you know, to get some money up front. So they signed 50 million with Nike for like 500 years or whatever it was. And, Emirates right, yeah. and all those kinds they of wanted long term guaranteed income yeah, rather yeah, than, you know, but, you know, they but they had to do it in order to get the money. I mean, there was a mortgage, yeah. there were loans, there were sponsorship deals. There was all of this kind of stuff. Right. And it was a struggle and there was a lot going on, you know, a to find a place that was close enough to Highbury. There was talk of Wembley. David Dean wanted us to move to Wembley. Um, there was talk of Milton Keynes, if I remember correctly, moving out that way, you know, all that kind of stuff. So to, to be able to build a stadium where we built it uh, so close to Highbury was, was amazing, but it was a lot of work. And there was a lot of talk about how Arsenal were financially restricted. And, you know, I remember talk about maybe wages weren't going to be paid at one point because there was so much, um, machinations behind the scenes to raise the money to get this thing done and it was such hard work and the hours that went into building it planning it putting it all together etc cetera, etc cetera. and i feel like when kse when stan Kroenke got involved when ivan gazidis came on board Arsenal were top four season after season after season. They had this beautiful new stadium, you know, incredible facilities, incredible training ground, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think they ever really understood the hardship of A, leaving Highbury, of B, making that stadium happen. And I always felt like they kind of coasted on that a little yeah. bit. They coasted on it. You know, they thought, well, we'll always get top four, so we can just do what we do. We've got a beautiful stadium. We don't have to do much else. You know, this this is a sort of self-perpetuating money machine, if you like. And you can uh, you could have made the right decision, but been very naive about how you actually executed it at the same time. And that's yeah. exactly what happened. I mean, yeah. you know, who wanted while 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 financial fair play was getting ready to set in, and Manchester uh, City and Chelsea took preventative action to make sure that they could, you know, at least cheat less uh, mm -hmm. noticeably. Once it started, um, Arsenal was not in a position to do even anything. I mean, not mm -hmm. even just because of the lack of, uh, you know, the the amount of debt with the stadium, but because we didn't have an owner <laughs> at the time. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that that's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's another aspect of, of everything that happened in the second half of, of Arsene Wenger's time at the club was, the you know, the Cold War, if you like. Um, so, yeah, look, I mean, you'd like to think we're in a better place right now, but I do wonder if, you know, when they look back on it, KSE might think, you know, we, we kind of took our eye off the ball a little bit. We just sort of went in and assumed everything would be hunky-dory the way it always was, but... Um, yeah, there you go. So I have to think about that theory a bit more, but I, I, I do feel like that contributed a lot to to some of the underperformance or, or lack of success, if you like. And I'm not blind to the fact that other clubs came along and had a lot more money and spent it and took some of our best players and all that kind of stuff. But there you go. Well, the, the 43 of you in, in, in the in the audience right now have just seen the workshopping of a, of a concept and an idea Um Andrew will, of course, perfect this now, and it will be appearing on an upcoming Arscast <laughs> Extra, where he will give no credit to Mike and I for helping you through this process of uh, the creative process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, look, I will. I, footnotes, isn't that what they call it? You just get a little... Little the only time, the only time I can get mentioned on, uh, on, on, on the Arscast is as a, is as a gerbil. 
Um, <laughs> and is there any part of, course of you that... overlooking the obvious plug that you gave to Goodness versus Cancer, which had a massive impact? So thank sure. you for that. I just yes, I don't want to thank you. Thank you, thank you so me. much for that, Andrew. Yes, no, uh, all... I said, is there any? You know, so I, I like to believe there's no world in which seeing that Highbury would would be more beneficial in today's market. So I, I look at Emirates as a necessary move, but do you think hmm. had Stan Kroenke acquired the 100% ownership and wasn't going through that tug of war a few years earlier, do you think he would have had the same behavior uh, of spending and acquire, you know, and I'm going to use the term investing. And I know that's a little, I'm going to hmm. just say that's a gray area. Cause I know a lot of people are like it's loans, however you want to slice that. But you think had he, achieved the 100% ownership maybe five years earlier from Gazidis. While yeah. we were getting Champions League money. While right? we were let, getting let Champions me, League Let money. me refine the question if I can build on it. Go for it. He's spending money now because he's 100% owner, but when he became 100% owner, he had to dig out of a massive hole by spending money. If if instead, you know, when we were getting fourth, cruising along, getting third occasionally, getting Champions League money and running a profit every single year, he then got 100% ownership. Would he have had the impetus to go? I don't want to be third or fourth anymore. I want to be first. Oh, uh, there's a sixty-four thousand dollar question. I mean, I can answer one of those. I, I have experience answering that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me see. I don't. I don't know. You know, I think we've we've gone through. Like he was always very hands off, wasn't he? When Arsene was in charge, like he deferred to Arsene from a footballing perspective. To a fault. To a fault. Yeah. To a fault. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you know, even when Arsene left, he deferred to the people who were at the club to a fault, a considerable fault. I think the reason we're spending well, he was now, filling that vacuum that was, I think, caused by the whole stalemate between yeah. Usmanov and Kroenke. That's my theory, anyway. I'm part workshopping that right now. Part of it. Um. I mean, I think they're spending now because they have to. There was pressure on them. You remember summer of 2019, the We Care, Do You. Um, I'm not saying that that's why they spent, but look, you know, when you're a club that is, when your trajectory is going that way, you need to act to, you know, first stabilize it, plateau, and then work your way back up. Um, but I think what you know what's probably most encouraging now about Arsenal is that what we're doing, whether it all works or not, and I think you know some of it will work, some of it won't work. We'll have good days and bad days. Um, you know, as always, it it feels like it's being done with a plan in mind, with some strategy, with some coherence, with some intelligence. We're not trying to find sticking plasters anymore. We're not trying to just desperately hang on and see if we can hang on the coattails of the teams that are finishing in the top four we know we've got to do things differently we've had to do things differently to get ourselves back to where we want to get to so uh, it's taken them too long to realize that they needed to be on top of things at arsenal i like i said i think they all they just kind of thought well it'll keep going it'll keep going you know um and maybe a couple of eighth place finishes have, have opened their eyes to that. Um, you know, mitigating circumstances, of course, we all know how difficult it's been with COVID and everything else. But, you know, there's no question that they are spending more since they took 100% ownership. But also, since they took 100% ownership, we've, you know, had two of our worst seasons in 25 years, whatever it is. So they're responsible for that. They can't look at it and go, hmm, how did that happen? Oh yeah, no, that one hundred percent. They're responsible for it, and 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 they're spending their way out of it. But I also think the more important thing is, and this is you know as as evidenced by uh, our friend Aston Mack, who should be uh, in here uh, shortly, um, who who he got the experience of being in the in the in the owner's box with Josh and Stan and. Uh, right. Eni and Zinchenko and, and and who who probably didn't comment too much on the uh, ownership strategy, but you know he was the one person that got FaceTime with them in the fan base or media combined, and has told us that you know there is recognition, there is you know Stan kind of there's a dynamic that's going on where Stan says I want to get me a Champions League, like literally that's what mm -hmm. he said. 
He's gonna um, want to claim the trophy too, just like the Super Bowl. He's gonna want to yeah, be yeah, there. He's gonna run out of. He's the, gonna yeah. be the one that lifted. He said, "I want to get me a Champions League." I, I that, that, is, that is basically how. I, I hope we have a crossover where Aston shows up because, you know, he was like, he's "Like I'm taking you all all out for dinner when we win us that Champions League." Like, like it's we're all it's, going land dancing. Yeah, we're, we're going on a Sizzler. Um, <laughs> I'm taking you boys to Hooters. Oh, dude, oh my god. I mean, just I'm I'm just envisioning this thing. I mean, I don't know how Aston even remembers this. My mind would have been like going like spinning, but mm. um, but like, so I don't know what's be- what what's what's worse or what's better. What's worse is, um, you know, that he goes, I'm gonna I want to get me one of them one of them Champions League thingies, uh, <laughs> or the fact that he actually said one. that and is aware of the fact that there is something beyond the FA Cup that that we can go after. Yeah, well, look. You know, I thought the, the FA Cup was the Super Bowl to him. Well, look, the Rams have won the Super Bowl. Um, who, who, which the is Colorado the, Avalanche, Denver, the Colorado Avalanche, like you know, very incre- impressive uh, building from from yeah. from you know in the I'm, American model from you know from worst to first. The thing about it is, is that you know when every American sports fan I talk to about Cronky and the you know. 10 years or whatever since he's been involved maybe longer it's obviously longer it's about 15 years now isn't it um you know it was always like they preside over middling sports franchises which don't really win anything um i know the whole u.s sports system is different when it comes to how you can show him uh, ambition how you invest how you recruit things like that i know it's different but but that was the the common thread was like kse they just kind of chug along. They don't really win very much. And maybe he's decided this winning shit is good. I like it. It might give him, you know, some swelling in areas. I, that, I like you know, it. I love it. I want some more of it. Yeah. I think is, uh, yeah. is what he's saying. And, and, um, and, 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 and he might even be saying, I can feel a champions league coming in the air tonight. I'm sorry, I had to do it once. Jesus Christ. I had one. to do it once. I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. A... I'm sorry. Um, you were so well behaved. I, I know. I was. I, I really was well behaved until then. He and, uh... there. I was going, is he going to do that? Because last time we were on it, he was <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, walking away, and then he's sort of going like, you know, looking down. To, uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I get bombarded with Phil Collins. It's like, oh, come no, on. I'm sorry. Um, couldn't help myself. But uh, so... How was your vacation, by the way? Did you it enjoy was, it? It was nice. It was nice to get away. It was very, very, very hot in northern Spain. Um, it doesn't usually get quite that hot. Um, I, I like it. But I got in the sea quite a lot, which is good. Um, ate some lovely food. Uh, didn't have any airport disasters or anything like that. So uh, you your ankle and have a, you'd have a huge no. golf ball in your ankle. Uh, no, 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 that was grim, didn't it, for Elliot? Jeez. Yeah. No, no naked man in your hotel room when you check. No, out. definitely no naked man in my hotel room. We'll certainly not that win. I did about uh, live it, on it air. It's anyway. insane the number of people that accused me of being that person. Well, you know, Mike, <laughs> it's not really it's, it's, it's on brand of credibility that it might be you. Yes, I mean, I, I was in Baltimore that day, but uh, but yeah, it, it, it is. And then, fully clothed. and then of course, uh, well, I wasn't fully clothed, but I was in Baltimore. The I, um, I, the 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 interview we did, a, you know, a, a a video of of me and James where I was apologizing to James for my transgressions. Yeah. And the next the next day, someone came up to me, dead serious face at the bar in Orlando, saying, you know, <laughs> hey man, I saw your video. Did James forgive you? <laughs> and I'm like, forgive me for what? And he's like, well, for the hotel room thing. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, my friend, that was a joke. <laughs> that was that was our uh, special sense of humor. And uh, so yeah, I, I I almost felt bad because I was like laughing at him so much for thinking that was serious to the point where I think he was offended. But um, but yeah, I can say it's, it's not before, impossible to think it was you. It, it it isn't. It isn't. And when, uh, when James said that story, I immediately messaged James and said, "What did he have a birthmark on his left cheek?" That's how I was going to know if it was Mike. And, yes, Jesus Christ! There's a lot of <laughs> sensitive information flying around here. Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, before I forget, and so that we aren't uh, asking you for this when our when our esteemed next guest uh, drops in, we'd rather have a, a, a nice uh, handover than be asking you for top four, bottom three, and okay. predictions. So why don't we do that now? Uh, your top four? My top four is Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal. I... Th- I f- think it could well be the horrible one i think it I could be the horrible one i can't believe how many people are picking them for to- I, I think they've i actually think they're regressing well i hope so and look you know like everybody i hope harry kane uh, sustains an elliot style ankle injury in the first game of the season and, and misses <laughs> a big chunk of it i don't you see i i am i i think chelsea are a shambles i think chelsea are gonna fall apart could be famous last words. Uh, there's still a month to go for Chelsea to look at who anyone else is buying and then try and buy them and actually yeah. get a deal done. The only the only thing better than than uh, than the new owner coming in mm. and not spending money and driving everyone crazy is spending money in the wrong way. Yeah, and I I think that's that's what we're seeing from from Todd Bowley. Uh, the, I mean, just going abso- absolutely on a bender uh right What's now in the u.s thing what's his who does he own in the u.s the dodgers who are the biggest spending uh baseball club right now the one league where there is also not a salary cap which is why right. Cro- why kse does not own a baseball team yeah because uh, yeah, yeah. they're not protected by their uh by their revenue sharing and, and salary cap uh mm. ways but um and and they're about to spend money on one of the b- best baseball players of all time to try to Sign him to like a billion dollar contract. So I mean, he's not That's afraid not to spend bad. money. That's not bad for a bit of fucking throwing and you know, it, it's just it's, a ball. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. You Baseball's know? the dumbest. I, it's the dumbest. Uh, I can't stand baseball, but uh, and how much money it's, these guys it's, make is right now a bad time to say I'm a Dodger fan. Yeah, yeah, it, like it's it a is. Bad, okay, how... <laughs> yeah, and you're a Dodger fan living in 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 San Francisco uh, area. Are, so. are the Dodgers L.A.? Yeah, yes. right. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, some people always get this confused due to Andy. But I was born in uh, Los Angeles, not Mexico. Uh, just a fun fact there. <laughs> Did he make himself <laughs> director of soccer? He, please tell me Todd Bowley didn't come into Chelsea and say I'm director God. of soccer. <laughs> Please oh, tell me he did. That would be hilarious. I would. Love I that. would love that. I mean, that would be worse than Ted Lasso, basically. Um, <laughs> so bottom three. Yeah, bottom three, bottom and we're going to speaking of bottom three. Uh, Aston is back. Good morning to Aston. Andrew, Aston I'm sure back. you've uh, you, you've heard of and, and seen Aston all over the place lately. I have. I have. I've never had a chance to chat or, or to say hello. So nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. That means you don't remember, do you? <laughs> oh, shit. Did we already? Oh, damn. 2014 in New York in oh. the uh, in the uh, pub that was downstairs. Oh, I think it was like the Blind Pig. Oh, hello. Uh, I gave you an interview and you gave my friend the last copy of your book in the bathroom. Wow. Ooh. That was yeah, amazing. That memorable. I was like four hours in the back of this bar. It was like whatever, <laughs> hundred degrees. And there was a queue around the block and there's just so many people coming up for books and books and books and books. So like I met so many people that night. I don't quite remember that. I do remember the last copy of the book thing, but I don't remember meeting you personally, but it was just. That's because he wasn't him yet. He wasn't him yet. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't me yet. Plus, I was drunk, and I interviewed Robbie too from AFTV back then. So it was. That's it was a night. It was a night. As we all know, that was a yeah. very long night for a lot of Arsenal fans. Right? Yeah. We had a had a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was uh, that was some night actually. Twenty fourteen as well. Time. Flies. I actually remember when that happened. I wasn't up there, but your your bottom three, real quick, because bottom uh, three. Uh, I am gonna go Nottingham Forest. Mm. Bournemouth. I'm going to do um, Southampton. Oh, been a popular South, pick. Southampton getting a lot of heat this. And kind of an out of uh, kind of an out of left field kind of speaking of baseball, an out of left field prediction that isn't necessarily odds on, but 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 you think could happen for what the Premier League in general or for, for anything or? football related. Like I mean, we've had people say. Uh, that you know, Newcastle hires Jose Mourinho. We have that was uh, Re- somebody said refs will be exposed as cheats this season. 
Yes, and Ooh. someone said a, 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 a Premier League manager will celebrate a goal by taking his shirt off. <laughs> you, got, you got a ride range, Andrew. Just literally. Oh, my goodness. Let me have a think about this. Um, a surprise thing that might happen in the Premier League. Um, God almighty. This, I'm really struggling now to think about something that might I'm looking at all the teams and <laughs> looking at I think... Um, God, that wouldn't be a surprise. I was going to say Frank Lampard will get sacked very quickly, but that's not really a surprise at all, is it? No, the surprise would uh, be Frank Lampard making it through the season. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, Gabriel Jesus will be the top scorer in the Premier League this season. Jesus, well, Golden Boot. I like right, that. We've, we've gotten one of those, and, uh, and I think that's definitely something that can happen. I am now. <laughs> we'll kill Harry Kane. Yes. <laughs>